kind of take my own first steps in my financial journey. Like I hung around pretty much everyone that was older than me, um, kind of drifted away from my like high school friends. And um, pe- the first person at work um, was my manager. And uh, he, you know, he wasn't like a multimillionaire or anything, but he, you know, talking to him, he was open about his, his retirement savings, his personal savings, um, trying to pay off his house early. He only had a couple of years left. Like, you know, just kind of learning like, okay, there's a different way to do things financially than from what I had seen growing up. Um, and then I had met another friend at work who eventually introduced me to Curvy. And uh, yeah, most of my friends or mentors or whatever are just, they're all older than me. And it's, it's very true. You have to meet people that are more mature. Um, and uh, they, they'll definitely give you guidance and show you the mistakes or teach you about the mistakes that they made so you can avoid them before you know, you, you can't really learn that from someone your age because they haven't experienced just as much as the, as an older person has. Right. But, um, but the first question I have is what made you both get started on your financial journeys? And if it was something that you decided together or was it separately and then you came together? Uh, so as our son is making noise in the background, we oh, okay. wanted yeah. oh, financial. I, I, don't I can't know. even hear. We can't. I, I can't really hear it. So it's OK. Oh. No, so no, actually, little. Well, I we hear him, and but like he's probably the reason that we wanted okay. to take off our financial journey. First and foremost, before we were right when we got married, before we had thought about having kids, it was just like the amount of debt we were in. We were just living paycheck to paycheck. Okay. Um, we started travel nursing. We got out of debt, and then we were just kind of like enjoying and cruising. It was really like this: be something bigger concept happened do something better um that's kind of extraordinary don't just be ordinary have a nice house be financially stable no like extraordinary that came after the birth of our first son yeah i would say that's when i started the youtube channel Mm -hmm. that's when we bought our first house and we were like okay we we just got some you know energy and motivation on you know what we we need to teach this we need to show or prove like show an example to our son And we both came from low beginnings, like very low income wise, uh, social society wise. So we were like, we need to push. So I think that triggered our motivation to push real hard, our son. Yeah. Is there any, um, like any figures online, like Dave Ramsey or anyone that you say? Yeah. You guys. Oh, she hated Dave Ramsey. She hated him. (laughs) I I, I I used to listen to our audio and I drive and she's like, can you just stop for one time, Dave oh, Ramsey? Wait, I didn't like, hate <laughs> Ramsey. It just, we were in so much debt. His, uh, the okay, way he talks okay. made me so uncomfortable. He says like, oh, we're in all this debt. I'm uncomfortable. I don't want to hear it. Like I was the person who I'd have piles of mail and I wouldn't even look at it because I knew it was like. She, see, she's the person who <laughs> piles up mail and ignores it thinking it's not going to come up. <laughs> and once he got married, I started ripping all our mail open and I opened her mail. She's like, why are you opening all these bills? I said, I want to see how much we owe. Like, you know, we, I don't want to think about it right now. I'm stressed oh. out. I don't want to worry. I said, you're going to make this worse. So Dave Ramsey is like ripping everything, like op- exposing you on your finances, right? Yeah. He's telling you. So I constantly made her listen to it. Yeah. And I said, Lynn, this guy is telling something which we can you know, benefit from. So Dave Ramsey did initiate our journey. Literally, we used the five baby steps, you know, the, the snowball method. Right. And we paid only, we worked on cash. We had cash envelopes. Mm-hmm. We paid the smallest credit card. We had like close to 16,000 in debt. 18,000 18, credit card. And we paid that in like nine months. And we with used, just one income, basically. With one income. She was in school. I was working as a staff, staff just a new nurse. So I was not making significant. We were both helping our families. Yeah, we were helping our families. And rent, we, we lived in our own place. So I didn't make that much. People are like, oh, you're a nurse. I said, no, dude. I, I was doing so many other things where it's not my nurse money, which we paid it off. It's right. just the Dave Ramsey method, the right. five baby steps. Mm-hmm. It's, uh, is it the five or six baby? Seven, seven, baby. seven. seven, seven baby. We used only five though. <laughs> <laughs> then we started our own route, which I, I yeah. My like advice too with that is not one person's way is gonna be the right way. I mean, there's other people we have listened to on YouTube, and I'm terrible with names. Alex. Uh, Hormozy. Her, yeah. The the guy with the beard. Oh, yeah. I know who you're talking about. Yeah. Yeah. yeah so he actually talks about like 
to an extent leverage, which Dave Ramsey would be like, no, don't leverage zero. And I think right. combination with Dave Ramsey's snowball method, I mean, with, and using leverage to your biggest benefit is um, pretty much kind of what we're doing because it's like, we'll leverage, we have big shovels, but at the same time we'll leverage. And then when we're kind of taking a pause from that, we'll go back to, okay, let's pay the smallest debt first, which is what Dave Ramsey suggests. And then we'll just kind of re-leverage. And um, it's it's about balance because not one person's way is always the correct way. It's about taking a mixture and doing what's best for you and your situation. And so far it's been working. Yeah, I would agree. Um, me and uh, Kirby have talked a lot about that kind of combining Robert Kiyosaki, Dave Ramsey, those kind of- yes. myths. Robert Kiyosaki, another one, which- I, I keep telling, I listen to something and I tell it to her. So it's like, even that right. is like a motivation. Like two people who are motivated are listening to their, they're pumping themselves up. So they are constantly educating and different people. I listen to some people. Now she's reading a book mm-hmm. on what's her name? Kendra Scott. Kendra Scott, you know, the Shark Tank, one of the right. guest okay. guests. Yeah. So she's okay. telling me about her. So while she's reading, you know, her, that financial goal. So with Robert Kiyosaki right. uh, and going back to your question, we choose to risk more right now i wouldn't suggest anyone well, to do what we are doing fully because we are risking a lot of things because we think we have known we got the secret on how to get out of debt so we are trying to leverage and we are younger so i told them we can risk a little more which i don't think dave ramsey can say it out on his program because that's if you're not an as- experienced risk taker then i'd say go for it but if you're not experienced and you don't have like it depends on the size of the shovel you have yeah it depends on like the risk versus how much capacity you have to make with the skill set that you have as well. Because we're both nurses. We could work anywhere. We could make as much money as we choose to make. Um, yeah, literally, we can work seven days a week. And yeah. like, literally, yeah. like our income can go about even ca- cardiothoracic surgeons. Um, like, if we work, because we work by the hour. And if there's a goes, California nurse who worked every day for a year and made like almost a million dollars. Yeah, in California. Because the laws are different. But again, that's saying that our shovels are bigger so based on that we are like let's push harder in case i don't even want to say big shovels too because like someone could have a big shovel but be on salary and not have an opportunity to work overtime or um get a second job um it depends on how big your shovel is and your ability to make more with that shovel because some people are capped at a certain amount of hours as well and nurses really aren't yeah, I would agree completely. Kirby, uh, Kirby was texting me. You have something, Kirby? Yes. All right. So, FYI, on the Dave Ramsey plan, I was just laying. I hated every word of it because it just seemed like it was too daunting. <laughs> so, so uh, I too followed the Dave Ramsey plan starting out, and uh, and I believe I heard you say you was about eighteen thousand in debt. I was about two hundred and fifty thousand in debt. Oh uh, Dave Ramsey plan. Uh, yeah, so Dave Ramsey plan, uh, I followed it religiously, religiously, and then I made it all the way from step one to step seven. Wow. And all the way to step seven, I, I uh, accumulated I accumulated the million dollars, but as you said, there's other methods out there. So I'm I'm reading the Robert Kiyosaki books and stuff like that, learning about methods, OPM and stuff like that, and then I proceeded to double and triple my portfolio using another method with that. So, I mean, I like the fact that, you know, you, you reach out and you use somebody that, of course, you learned a method that was better than your current situation and then you started going down that path. But then when you went down that path, you got more financially literate. I think that's the, the, uh, the word that she was trying to come up with when, when she was saying that if you have a big shovel but you don't know what to do, it's, it's all about the financial literacy and understanding how finance works. The more you understand how finance works, then it's more you can understand how leverage, how return on investment, uh, and stuff like that, and how real estate, how the stock market, just the things that will work out for you. So I love it. I love it because I was going through the same thing. Dave Ramsey, I was listening to him, and I was saying, if this guy don't work, I'm calling the custom out because <laughs> this stuff is too much to bear for one person. True. No. Yeah, so, wow, man, that's very impressive on your one to seven. I, yeah. I don't think we reached seven yet. I think we paused. I told you at five, and we're like, we are doing our own thing now. <laughs> I think, yeah, I think we made it to five, and we realized we're like, okay, we're young right now. We had just bought our first house. We're like, 
we're not going to pay off that house. Let's buy it. Like, instead of like putting this cash to the first house, let's go buy a second house and make it pay for itself. Because theoretically, if you have a bunch of houses that are paying for themselves in 15 to 30 years down the line, you're not, you, you don't only own those houses. Those are um, providing you full income. No, but yeah, you're right. It's literacy of fi it financial literacy. Like I, I grew up in India, so I'm an immigrant to the United States eight years and I've not known all these things other than YouTube, like YouTube and Lynn yeah. listening to me, me through YouTube and the free content or, you know, just made me like, wow, I didn't learn this in school. Mm -hmm. Like, I don't know where to invest my money. What's, what's, what's a rental property or what's a house? How do I, I what's a mutual funds account? We don't, I had no clue. We had no, what's like other than YouTube in school, she didn't learn anything. I didn't learn nothing. None of these. I learned what not. I learned how to spend money though. <laughs> yeah. No, those are, I, I love those points. I'm sure Kirby's over there loving what Lynn was just saying, because he, he teaches the same thing, you know, using uh, your investments to pay for your lifestyle, basically, or, you know, instead of paying off your house early, investing in a property or multiple properties and using the cash flow to pay off, you know, the house that you're living in, just using your, the income that you're producing from your investments or your assets to essentially pay for everything that you have. Another thing I realized is like the concept of 401ks, as much as people will hate me for saying this, um, people who had like 100,000 in their 401ks 10 years ago, that's that, that, or 20, 30, 40, 50 years ago, that could have got them by in retirement. But now people who are saying, oh, I'll have a million in my 401k by the time I'm retired, maybe it could get you by now for 10 years or so if you live off of 100,000, but it can't get you by like in like, five, 10 years from now, a million is going to be the new hundred thousand. So real estate appreciates in value when the 401ks, it just kind of seems to be level in my opinion. So that's why we're like, not so focused on 401ks either. I'd rather put it into real estate because, because they appreciate in value. And by the time you're retired, it's not just, oh, I'll sell the house and live off of the money. It's I'm going to rent it out and make money off of like 10 rentals and I'm retired. Exactly. But that's our opinion. I know people can argue on this. Some people will argue. Yeah, no, for sure. Everyone has different ideas. Um, I love the 401k method. Hey, uh, hey. Yeah, go I ahead. Was... Yeah, I, Lynn, I'm agreeing with you a lot. Now I see why you're the smart one. <laughs> but um, the 401k, the 401k, we actually did a video about that. A million dollars is not enough to retire on. So I just wanted to say, Kudos to you for recognizing that as a, at a young age and pivoting and moving to something because bills come every month. And if you have something that produces cash flow to cover your bills every month, you'll be well off, nowhere well off, and just having a million dollars and you were hoping to pinch off this for the next 10, 20, 30 years to just going to buy. So just kudos to y'all for that. That's all I have. Sorry, y'all. Yeah, that's a smart decision by Lynn because I'm like, oh, yeah, I forgot. Let me see. I'm like, yeah, it makes sense on, yeah. <laughs> I mean, if you want to put, like, some in your 401k, it's it's a di it's it's good, be but it shouldn't be the only thing you depend on either. For, the, for, for people who are wanting to go max, I'm not saying for everybody, but the normal person, I agree. Don't tease them too much because it's or, or what do you call it, too much information. So let them do the 401k, like, but for us specifically. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. For, I mean, in like in my case, I would say like my goal with the 401k, um, I, I love taking advantage of like the, uh, how you can deduct uh, what you've contributed to your 401k from your income taxes. Yeah. Uh, and then sure. my idea or my focus on the 401k is just kind of like, by the time it can be withdrawn for both my wife and I, we, I would like to just put it into real estate. So I can see your point. Real estate would be the most important because Essentially, yeah, you can't really live off of the lump sum of a 401k, even if you hit a million, um, you would have to have millions, you know, tens of millions in there before you could actually just survive off of it. Because the reality is real estate will provide you cash flow, which you need, you need income. And a 401k, unless you have it invested heavily into dividends or dividend stocks, uh, you're not going to really be receiving any kind of cash flow uh, from your 401k account. Hi right, guys, thank you so much for watching. Um, hit the like button, subscribe, check out their channel for sure. And we'll see you guys in the next video as always.